shouldn't have talked to me like that. <clears throat> At the height of his power, William Tweed, better known as Boss Tweed, was the third largest landowner in New York City, a director of the Erie Railroad and a director of the 10th National Bank. But that's just touching the surface. The question remains, how did this remarkable man rise to power? Boss Tweed ran for city alderman twice, winning the office on his second try. He became associated with the 40 Thieves, a group of aldermen known as the most corrupt in the city's history. After an uneventful term in Congress, Tweed was elected to the New York County Board of Supervisors, the first group that he used for corrupt monetary gain. This is for business with the city. I'm sorry, there's a 15% upcharge for Tweed, the money would not stop flowing. By paying off the Republican members, he put the board in a 7-6 Democratic majority. Tweed essentially gained control of all Democratic nominations. Tweed formed a group of elite men who he put in all the positions of power in the city, called the Tweed Ring. With Tweed at the head, their power spread like a virus all across New York. They even set their sights on Tammany Hall. Tammany Hall acted as an executive committee in a democratic society. Tweed was put in place as chairman of the Democratic General Committee and was later the Grand Sachem. Tammany Hall became the engine of Boss Tweed's political machine. With his ring of friends and followers, he became the boss of the entirety of New York. However, regimes cannot last forever. In 1871, Tammany Hall, under the leadership of Tweed, allowed the Irish Protestants to publicly celebrate a historical victory over the Catholics. The same celebration caused a riot the year prior, so what happened next was entirely predictable. With over 60 dead and over 150 injured, public opinion turned on the boss. And things only got worse. This is the evidence we got from Boss's dead bookkeeper. We finally got what we needed to put him away. Excellent. With this evidence, the feds were able to trace the cash flow from the city contractors right back to Tweed's pockets. It seems like the story should end here, but Tweed was too slippery to stay in prison for long. He escaped to Spain and tried to start a new life there, but people recognized him from Thomas Nast's satirical cartoons and he was hauled back to jail. This time, he was out of tricks, and Boss Tweed died alone in a jail cell on December 31st, 1873. This is the evidence from Boss's death. <laughs> Take two. Take two.